welcome to the program Healthy Living on Trust Television. I'm Aisha Salihu. Now, newborn screening is a vital part of healthcare for newborns in Nigeria. One of the most important screenings done in is for sickle cell disease, a genetic blood disorder that affects thousands of children in the country. Numerous studies and experts provide clear evidence that life-threatening early complications of sickle cell disease like sepsis, splenic sequestration crisis can be lightly avoided if the diagnosis is made early, if possible, in the first three to six months of life. This can considerably reduce morbidity and mortality. The, the issue with sickle cell disease is it's not just in rural areas, it's a population uh, based problem where you have uh, like in a country where you have a high prevalence of sickle cell disease where up to 2% of uh, babies you know have sickle cell disease and where about 25% of uh, the population have the trait that's the trait they are carriers of the sickle cell gene and this this is where the sickle cell babies are being made from when uh, two carriers marry, then you know they have the possibility to have a sickle cell baby in each pregnancy, a one in four chance. And, and so you have uh, sickle cell people, both in the cities as well as in the population, is that the majority of the people who have sickle cell disease are not in the hospitals. They are in the communities undetected. And without detection, most of the babies will die without being detected. And that is the reason for having a newborn screening program. And even when they are detected, we still have issues about people coming to the hospital to receive the care that they should. Sickle cell disease is a genetic blood disorder. That means that as soon as the baby is conceived, the baby has the genes for sickle cell. So all the way from conception to birth to after birth, there's a possibility to detect that, the, you know, that this baby has sickle cell disease. Some people are doing the prenatal diagnosis. But the one that we are involved in is newborn screening. That is from birth, from day zero. We can take samples from the baby and we can uh, test in the lab and see that the baby, if the baby has uh, the gene for a uh, sickle cell. Ideally, by the time a woman um, is coming to antenatal clinic, this is part of what she should be told about in the antenatal clinic that one, you know, you can have a baby that has sickle cell and then in the antenatal clinic I believe that some uh, health uh, institutions do mandatory genotype testing of the mothers. That's one way that you can go. But of course you know that many mothers do not even come for antenatal so they can have the baby Maybe, you know, when the, baby, when the woman is in labor, she can go to any clinic, so she may have missed that. Then some people do not even have the babies in the hospital at all. So they can have the babies at home. But when they bring the babies to the healthcare center, the primary healthcare center, then we can test and find out. So ideally, during pregnancy is when this information about newborn babies a newborn screening can be passed on, you know, they can be sensitized so that when they have the baby, they will uh, bring the baby for testing and they will know that it's not enough to test, that after testing and we give the result, if it's positive, they need to follow up. They need to bring the baby back to the hospital so that we can give some medicines and we can train them how to look after the babies with sickle cell. Nigeria, yeah, is known to bear the highest burden of sickle cell disease globally. You know, there's an annual uh, birth rate of uh, 300,000 sickle cell disease globally, and out of that, uh, over uh, out of that 300,000, mm. more than 150,000 of those sickle cell disease babies are born in Nigeria. So you can see that uh, 
Nigeria has the highest body. And this is uh, an initiative of the American Society of Hematology where they have set up a program, like a demonstration program, to let African uh, leaders know that uh, newborn screening for sickle cell disease is feasible and is possible. And so in seven African countries, um, Nigeria, Ghana, Liberia, uh, Zambia, uh, Tanzania, and Kenya, we have uh, this newborn screening program being implemented. And I think I missed one. Uganda, Uganda. So in these seven African countries, uh, we are screening between 10,000 to 16,000 babies annually. We are identifying these babies and we're enrolling them into healthcare and we'll follow them up for a period of five years, giving them evidence-based interventions that will help to uh, protect the babies from early complications that are associated with sickle cell disease. Okay, we all kind of started about the same time. We were the first uh, to um, launch the program. Um, we, we launched it in the November of 20, 2020. Uh, others have launched, so by now we have two years into the program. Nigeria has two years, and I believe the other countries have also had uh, about the same uh, time because we launched within a period of six weeks. Uh, six months of each other to launch the program. So program is about two years now. Ah, it's, it's kind of exciting. And at this stage, we'll, we'll, so the program in Nigeria is in two centers um, or sites. I think maybe site is better. We have the FCT in Abuja, which is here. You know, the center is at the center of excellence where we are carrying out this. And then the other is the Kaduna State uh, Government. Uh, the newborn screening program of the Kaduna State is by the same, you know, under the same initiative. So we have two sites. In, in Kaduna State, we have the Patrick Ibrahim Yakowa Memorial Teaching Hospital in Kafanchan. That is where the lab is. Then uh, we also have uh, screening sites in Barao Diko Teaching Hospital and in ABU, uh, Institute of Child Health in ABU. So these are, you know, centers uh, where, you know, and of course the satellite clinics around these sites where the screening is going on. In, uh, in Abuja, uh, the center is uh, ASESTA, that is the Center of Excellence for Sickle Cell Disease Research and Training at the University of Abuja. So we have a screening site here at the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital. Then we have screening sites at the town clinic um, and other centers, other primary healthcare centers in Kwagwalada Area Council, as well as other area councils within, within Abuja. Actually, my work starts from immunization clinic. Even the maternity ward, postnatal ward. So we, as soon as the baby is being born, we move to the mother. So, Counseling starts from there. We counsel them on what newborn screening is, what to expect. Once the result is out, if it is A, if it is AS, we let them know. Okay, we need to give the, the card the result, even if it's SA. But if it is SA, that is sickle cell, we'll have to talk to you personally, call you, counsel again, in order to prepare for the management aftermath. So once it starts like that at the clinic, so they are all well, they, they are well assured of what you expect. So once the result is out from the lab, I have to make a call to call the mother or the father. So we'll get the full numbers of both parents. So from there, we are call them to come to the hospital. But the challenges we're having is the distance. That's why we've not been able to enroll up to 50% of the numbers that have been confirmed because we are screening all over FCT. So most of our babies are outside Gogolada. So that's the challenges we're having. But from the counseling we do at the immunization center, that has helped the mothers to be aware of what we're doing. Right from the maternity ward when they give birth, 
you know, some of those babies are actually traced to the ward, you know, from the labor ward, you know, delivery room to the, mater to the maternity ward. And then some of those babies, we actually screen them even before they go and come back for immunization. So, but those that are delivered outside the hospital, when they come in for immunization, we catch them at that point to screen them for the disease. So the compliance have been quite good. Well, technically the term newborn or neonatal uh, screening, the neonates are between 0 to 28 days of life after birth. You know. So within that period, yeah, we screen them for this program in particular, you know, and we hope that between then up to six weeks we would have screened them and even enrolled them into the program. But uh, it does not mean that uh, babies that are beyond uh, the neonatal period, the 28 days period, cannot be screened. They can also be screened, yeah. you know, but uh, for this very project is uh, babies within that window of uh, neonatal period. You know, but uh, there are uh, other programs or opportunities that uh, mothers can use to screen their babies. We encourage them. Those that miss that period, we still encourage them to go to any hospital and they can be screened. Yeah, and, 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 and any if the period between zero to six months is a good period. You know, it, it, we can still if, if time it as early enough for for early intervention, mm -hmm. you know, because the because the the actual signs and symptoms begin around that period, but the target is to catch them before that uh, those signs and symptoms begin, you know, screen them and then begin to intervene early. The interventions are, are effective even. Uh, during that period and even after. This is a lifelong disease, you know. In fact, that six months is even just the beginning. Yeah, so we continue to give them this intervention, you know, at, uh, right from the time that they are detected, you know. We begin the intervention and it works, it still works. Experts say the fundamental role of newborn blood spot screening is to enable prompt diagnosis and optimal clinical management of individuals with sickle cell disease. However, more work needs to be done systematically to access, you know, enablers and barriers to implementation of newborn blood spot screening programs for sickle cell disease in Africa, especially in Nigeria. We'll take a short break now and we'll be back in a moment. Don't go away.
Welcome back. If you're just joining in, this is the program Healthy Living on Trust Television, and the conversation has been around stemming the tide of the sickle cell disease through early detection with the use of the newborn screening method. Seven-year-old Namperin, a carrier of the sickle cell disease, is a result of a failed genotype test report issued to his parents. You have to do, run some tests before you get married. And so we did. We did a genotype test. We did the test before we, we went to church to tell them about our intentions. We did the test and then as I am AS, my husband was AE. <laughs> so when we went to church, they said they need their own copy. So we need to do another one between that, the period. So we had to go to the hospital. But our, our mistake, I think, was that we went to the same facility to do the test. So my husband's genotype still read AA, and mine was AS. And then we got, my, we got a false um, report. So when we gave back to him, he was okay, he was all chubby, he ate and everything. But then all of a sudden, he, he stopped. He weaned himself at 10 months. He stopped sucking and then he stopped eating. So for like a week or so, we kept trying to give him meal, to give cereal to, but she wouldn't take. Bero Barbara Dapchi, mother of Namperin, still in disbelief, decides to verify her son's condition. My mom suggested we do a genotype test for him. And I was like, it doesn't change. Genotype doesn't change. His father is E and AS. There's no how he's, 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 uh, he has his SS. When I met the pediatrician, somebody referred me to the hospital. We, we went. He's a very good pediatrician. He examined him. And then he did all the tests. I didn't even tell him to do the test. He did every test. And then he told me that he has sickle cell anemia. I could not, we, we couldn't understand, you get. So we had to go and do another test for the dad because mine has been consistent since before, since when I was a child. I think I know my genotype, so. We did, and then we realized we got a false result from the facility we went to. She goes further to narrate how devastated the family has been. It hasn't been easy, but then our encouragement is that we, we have to do this for him. It's a different story if we had known and we still went ahead to do it. This is different for us. So we try to be there each time for him, and then we don't... We don't really make him feel, we don't have pity on him. We treat him like every other child. Barbara noted that her son's physical development has been greatly affected. He still looks small. He doesn't look seven. He looks four or five. So his younger brother is five, but they could pass for twins. So most times in school, his classmates will call him smally or how come you're in our class? You should be in nursery too. We get all sorts of. So and then there was one time he was worried about it, and he came back home and said, "Mommy, this person is calling me Smolly, and I don't like it." And I said, "You tell her that you don't like it." And then each time she calls you Smolly, tell her you're small but mighty. You know, I tried to make him loosen up a bit. Recently, he has been in and out of the hospital quite often, and then we're trying to know what and why, what's been causing it. One of such things is um, mosquitoes, malaria. They don't like mosquitoes. So once they have malaria, it triggers the crisis. The mother of two complained about the state of health facilities in the country, as it leaves a lasting effect on her family. We have done the test and we are going to get our result in the next appointment. But I have not done my own genotype. So you don't know your genotype? I don't know it. Because of the experience and because of with people around me that I've seen, so I make sure that I know my genotype before I got married. In routine immunization like this, I will give them health education. I will make sure I sensitize them, make sure they know the importance of this uh, program. Sometimes most of them say they know their genotype. Their husband is AA, my husband, I'm AA, madam, I don't need to check my genotype, I don't need to check my baby genotype. 
but they need counseling. So far, we have screened about 1,068 babies. Welcome back. If you're just joining in, this is the program Health Living on Trust Television, and the conversation has been around stemming the tide of the sickle cell disease through early detection with the use of the newborn screening method. So the, the success, for me, success will be every baby identified being enrolled in care. You understand? If we identify 107 babies, 107 babies will be enrolled in care and followed up. That is success for me. Not just to screen, not just to identify, but to make sure that every mother that has a sickle cell baby has received the proper education, has received genetic counseling, has received information on how to look after the baby, and is actually giving these babies, right, the right uh, treatment that they need. We call it prevention, uh, you understand, to look after the babies and make sure that they don't succumb. Because it's, it's, it, it can be done, and, and, it, and it's, newborn screening saves lives, but it will not save the life of any baby if after identifying the baby, the parents refuse to bring the baby to the hospital. Then it's, it's as good that you haven't done anything. There are different challenges, ranging from denial. Because once you talk about sickle cell, the first thing is, God forbid, this can't happen to me, it can't happen to my family. And um, another thing is um, laboratory error. You know, most of the couples before marriage, they will do the investigation and they find that one will be a AS, not knowing that both of them are AS. But when they uh, bring the baby and you tell them that the baby is SS, they tend to deny. That brings about that denial because they had already known that there's nothing of such in the family. And another thing is um, ignorance. Sickle cell doesn't occur. No, 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 no. It happens. You don't know. It's not in my family. It can never be. Then the challenges we are having, that's, that's, that brought about the challenges we are having. Then another thing that is really de uh, making this um, work so stressful for us is the distance. Having to come down to, having to come down to UATH, Gogolada, to enroll the baby. You know, most of them that we have really called and um, that have been confirmed prefer they are managing the management should con uh, continue where they are being screened. The sickle cell program is to look at the project environment, study it, and see how to overcome the challenges um, of you know in the project that we are encountering. And so, when we found out that uh, the low uptake of the screening and uh, people not wanting to come to the uh, teaching hospital because of the distance. Uh, in the second phase, we actually want to go to these primary health care centers and train them. We already have a multi-level standard of care guidelines for the management of sickle cell disease, which we will use in training those uh, um, health care workers in the primary health care centers to provide uh, health maintenance you know, for our babies where they are. When your baby has been identified to have sickle cell disease, please bring this baby back for us to help you look after the baby. I'm working with the federal government, and uh, the federal government has started, I'm really delighted to say that they have also started their newborn screening uh, program. And they are going to start with the Southwest. Because when they did a, 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 a survey, they found out that the prevalence of sickle cell disease was highest in the southwest of Nigeria. The, the federal government, so we are using conventional screening method, you know, where you have big machines and you take the samples, you come to the lab. That's what we are using in this American society. But there are other innovative ways of doing screening that you don't have to have a lot of uh, infrastructure to start and that is with uh, the use of point of care tests. So the federal government has passed, um, you know, through the Council of State, you know, it's, it's like, um, uh, it's not a bill, you know, but 
there's a there's um there's a policy it has a policy that newborn screening can be done using innovative point of care techniques so that means that any state in nigeria can mount their own newborn screening because the government also has a policy developed a policy for newborn screening you know that that you know uh, st stipulates all the activities that can be carried out in a newborn screening program so that has been passed by the council of state and any state can actually start without waiting for concert you understand so that that is in place uh, the government is aiming at universal newborn screening for all babies born in the country but you know when you have a policy it's up to the different states to take that policy and, and implement it. Everything has been developed. We identify these babies are not enrolling. How do we manage this problem? These babies don't want to be screened. How do we solve this problem? They don't know about genotype. How do we solve this problem? So we identified all the challenges. We designed a program and we said, okay, we're entering into the communities. We're talking to the um, community heads. In all the local government area council that we, are, we have our presence, we met the community leaders. Babies born in your centers don't want to screen for genotype and they are dying. And then the ones that have we never, we've been able to uh, identify don't want to take medications and we give them these medications for free. So um, what he did or what all the chiefs promised us to do and most of them did was to write letters to all um, the mosques, all the churches, all the, uh, uh, the ward heads and then youth leaders. So wrote to them and said, okay, this is how we intend to do. Let all babies that are born at home or in maternity homes go and screen their babies for um, genotype. So when we, when we did that intervention, it was amazing that we doubled the screening that we're doing per site in all the four, um, in the, in all the four area councils. Newborn screening can save lives and improve the quality of life for children with sickle cell disease. With the help of experts and the support of mothers in managing the condition, we can work towards a brighter future for these children. For comments, suggestions and contributions, follow us across all of our social media platforms. Join us again on another episode of the program. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thanks for watching.